Oregon offense continues to light up the scoreboard. The Ducks roll the Vikings and look ready for conference play. The Beavers' home opener was a wet and wild affair. Louisville's early wounds were self-inflicted, and OSU finished off the Cardinals in the fourth. Down on the farm, the Cardinal goes big against Wake Forest. In Tucson, a Big Ten Pac-10 showdown, and the Cats and Hawkeyes trade blows for a full 60 minutes. The Sun Devils go to Camp Randall, looking to upset the Badgers, but Wisconsin gets its kicks in the final seconds. In the Twin Cities, the Trojans battle the Gophers and put the Woods to Minnesota in the second half. At the Rose Bowl, the Bruins built their case for an upset of the Cougars, and Jake Mistake rears his ugly head as the children of the corn roll into Husky Stadium and deliver the Hurt Locker. With the beginning of fall marks the start of full-fledged conference play, but a 10 spot of Pac-10 football is on tap right now on Inside the Pack. Second down and seven, Froman from the gun, steps up, hit as he throws, fires, and James Dockery goes up and makes the interception at the 23-yard line of Oregon State, and the Beavers will survive a scary home opener against Louisville. Oregon State's home opener is a happy one as the Beavers survive a shootout with the Cardinals while the Ducks keep on rolling. Hello and welcome to this mid-September edition of Inside the Pack. I am Tom Ward. He is Nick Krupke and our in-studio analyst this week, former Oregon receiver Kristen McElmore. Kristen, thanks for being here. Seems like neither rain nor wind nor lightning nor the Portland State Vikings can stop the Oregon offense right now. No, I don't. There was nothing in that stadium that was going to stop them from firing up that that scoreboard. They uh, did an incredible job. Uh, the defense uh, looked like they were in a race to get off the field at times. Uh, certainly set the offense up to have a great day. Uh, a lot of guys got to play got to play yesterday. Yeah, and that's one of the side benefits of a game like Portland State. The downside is is people are still wondering how good the Ducks really are. Well, I tell you, you know, it, 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 it's a great, very, uh, a great way we rated it, looked at it. Uh, the Tennessee game, it certainly gave us an opportunity to see what skill sets they had. Um, but again, we're going to get to see the depth on a game like yesterday, um, see what those backups are going to have. Um, because as we know, there's going to be times that they're going to be necessary for them to play. Well, there's no question that Oregon has almost unmatched depth in college football, particularly on that defensive side of the ball where 31 guys got into the game. Nick, looking at Oregon State, they, yesterday against Louisville, dodged some bullets early. The Cardinals felt like they let this one get away. Certainly, I mean, the defense certainly had its faults, but early on it could have been 14 nothing. but you get the big stop there, and then you pop the ball out there for the touchback. But the problem with the Beavers, putting away the game. I mean, they were up three touchdowns and almost let them back into the game, got to get that killer mentality and really kind of put the hammer down and get these games put away because next week it is ratcheting up real high with Boise State. Well, we will talk more about Boise later in the show, but since 1999, guess how many times they've lost on that blue turf? Two. So a uh, big job ahead for Oregon State, but let's get the show moving here. In Oregon's first home game of the season, the Ducks set or tied several stadium or school records against New Mexico. Against Portland State on Saturday, more records were sure to fall. For the first time, the Ducks broke out the new carbon fiber look helmets. The Vikings 0-3 all-time at Autzen and former Husky Nigel Burton in for a long day and it started early. Third and short on the opening drive, LaMichael James break on through to the other side. Untouched, 66-yard warm-up touchdown for LaMike. The next drive on fourth and five, why not go for it? Darren Thomas to airmail. Jeff Mayle takes off on the spin, and he is gone. 47-yard touchdown for Mayle, 14-0. Ducks, after a Vikings turnover two plays later, Mayle again with the basketball background, goes up and gets the jump ball. 21-zip Ducks, not even five minutes into the game. Things relatively quiet until early in the second. Well, Mike had runs of 7-28 and then pop one for 35. 28-zip, James a career high, 227 yards on the ground. Ducks with a school rushing record, 528. Then QB to QB, Daryl Hawkins from Thomas. 12-yard strike, Hawkins second TD on the season. Make it 35 nothing. and it wasn't a 59-point first half, but it was 45. Thomas, nine yards to Malachi Lewis, getting some playing time. 668 yards of total offense, seven different Ducks scored touchdowns. Nate Costa, one of them. Third quarter, the senior signal caller calls his own number. Four yard TD run, 55 nothing. And then another senior, Remine Alston, puts the final points on the board. Alston around the left side and in. 
20-yard touchdown. Oregon rolls 69-0, so the Duck offense has now scored 114 unanswered. LaMike, the career best, 227. That ties Javid best for the least amount of carries by a Pac-10 back to reach 200 yards since 2004. James carried the ball just 14 times. Yeah, pretty awesome. Big runs will do that for you. As for the maturation of Darren Thomas, 50% passing, 9 of 18 for 140. 82 of those coming on three completions with mail. But defensively, the Ducks have recorded now two shutouts in the same year. First time they have done that since the 1955 team had four of them. The defense, number one in total D in the, comfort in the country. Number one total scoring D in the country to go along with that number one scoring offense of the country. Things looking good, but again, who have you played that looks pretty good so far? Most definitely. Well, Kristen, uh, the offense, like you said earlier, seemed like sometimes it was a race between them and the defense to get off the field. The defense in this game held Portland State 0 for 18 on third down. I mean, that is huge. Yeah, it's tough to it's tough to compete when you don't when you don't convert on third down. Um, you know, that's when you're going to give your guys opportunities to continue playing, keep that defense off the field, get those guys rested. Certainly, we saw the replay right there where the defense gets penetration into the backfield, forces uh, Portland State's Corey McCaffrey into a bad decision, put it on the ground, and then Brandon Bear just went crazy later in the game. He certainly did. He had he he comes up the, like a bull rushing. He is strong, fast, and he gets after it. And he just is relentless. And then he's nice enough to help up the quarterback. <laughs> and then when the Duck defense did break down, they would make up for it. Running back gets through the hole, they force the fumble. So That's, it seems like no matter what goes on on the field, the Oregon defense can bounce back from it. Certainly. They have a great and candy ability to be in the right place to make the right play. And then getting back to Michael James for just one second, 16.2 average per carry. He had runs of 66, 28, 35, 32, 668 yards of total offense. I mean, this is, I think, the best offense we've seen since Achilles Smith, the 98 season, because now they, they scored more in a three-game stretch than that team did to start the season against the likes of Stanford, San Jose State, Michigan State, uh, UTEP. Uh, great offense right now. I think so. I'm excited to see what we're going to be able to do once this Pac-10 season starts. Um, that's going to be the real qualifier to allow us to know what level they really are going to be able to play at consistently. And I, I look forward to it. It's going to be exciting. Well, Chip Kelly says they are ready for, ready for conference play, and it starts with the Arizona State Sun Devils in Tempe on Saturday. Just one game into the season, it felt like a two-week losing streak for the Beavers as OSU had to wait 14 days to play following the tough loss to TCU in Big D. The Beavs home opener against Big East foe Louisville. Now recall the Cardinals crushed the Beavs in Kentucky five years ago. Opening drive for the Cards. Fourth and goal from the two in the first quarter. Charlie Strong had confidence in his team, but Bilal Powell stuffed by Steven Paya and Taylor Henry turnover on downs. Next possession, Louisville thought they had the lead. Adam Froman with the quarterback keeper for the score. As he goes in, Celeste Tuamane punches it out. They look at it, they review it, correctly ruled that it was out of the end zone for a touchback, no touchdown. Until the final minute of the first, they'll score. Then Ryan Katz to Joe Halahuni, first TD of the year, three yarder, seven nothing Oregon State. Midway through the second, tied at seven, Jack Liz Rogers found a way in, gets in from 13 yards out, OSU out in front, 14-7. Just before the half, game tied at 14. 12-yard run to the one, followed up by this. Quiz in 21-14, OSU at the break. Second half, the touchdown hat trick for Quiz. This one through the air, four yards from Ryan Katz. Beaves up a pair of scores, 28-14, and the lead continued to grow. Next possession on the Wild Beaver formation, the direct snap to Quiz. He feeds Marcus Wheaton, the cousin of former Duck Kenny Wheaton, in for the 28-yard touchdown, make it 35-14, Beavers. Early in the fourth, it's now 35-21. It's Froman to Cameron Graham. Great grab in the back corner of the end zone. The Beaver lead down to 35-28. Down to about a minute to play, and Froman trying to lead the comeback. But James Dockery saves the day with the pick on the fade route. The Beaver's second takeaway on the day. Mike Riley and Oregon State gets out of there with the win. At 35-28, their ninth straight win and a home opener, snapping a three-game overall losing skid that dated back to the Civil War. Yeah, a bit of coincidence that Quiz finally went over 100 yards and they won again. 
Now with Boise State looming next week, though, they got to brace themselves on defense. 453 yards are given up to the Cardinals. And you don't have to be an expert to know the tackling and stopping of a mobile quarterback has to be better for this week's showdown with Kellen Moore on the blue turf. Kudos, though, to that goal line stand on the opening drive. The BD was challenged, and they rose to the occasion holding up that wall. But again, third down conversions, a bugaboo against TCU and Andy Dalton in the opener. And at times, it was a problem again with the cards. Froman breaking free of the pursuit and finding Donnell. Besides those two first quarter stops in the red zone, Louisville converted nearly 50% of the time on third, 7 and 15. Same drive, Froman finding a way on third down. He scrambled eight times, 46 yards. Certainly a younger defense than we've seen in recent years, but they got better as the game went on, clamping down that big key possession with three and a half to play. Then, of course, came the veteran INT by Dockery. But the big question now, do they have the speed next week to keep up with a team like Boise State who brings it on both sides of the football? Well, certainly we saw a little bit of that yesterday, I believe, where uh, Oregon State, maybe at times didn't have the sideline to sideline type of pursuit that they needed to really you know stop off Louisville's offensive attack they made enough plays to win the game and that's the important thing because they really needed this game going over to Boise well the Ducks are now three and oh and even if the combined record of their three opponents is two and seven there's still plenty of reason to feel good about where they are still to come on inside the pack the offense is putting up points at a breakneck pace but the guys on the O are giving it up to the D Defense, you got to give a lot of credit to them because uh, they're getting guys off the field and giving us opportunities. And the more possessions we can get, uh, the more deadly our offense can be. Plus, the Sun Devils went to camp 